Okay, so uh, I have a small technical problem here, but I think we can do it that way as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about APOC integration functions. Since I have only a sort of 15 minutes, I skipped the introduction. Uh, you can read that afterwards uh, when you get the slides. So what I want to talk is about, um, I want to give a little bit, very brief overview of uh, integration of Cypher uh, in terms of import-export of GraphML, import-export with Cypher directly. There's some functions for Elastic. There's something for Mongo. There's something for Couchbase. Uh, we have something for, for Gephi. And the, the main part is about the demo on how to access data sources of JDBC from APOC, so how to import such data from your relational database, how to interact with um, stuff that you have in format of JSON available or from XML. Yeah, regarding GraphML, GraphML is, an, is, is a kind of uh, standardized ex data exchange format, and therefore we support um, one function or one procedure that allows you to import GraphML data, and there's a bunch of features that allow you to export either the full graph or parts of that based on a cipher <coughs> query or based on, on, on a path you, you give in, uh, and that basically writes a file on the server. So currently there is, I'm not aware of an easy way to have back the, the file content as, as a download because it's, it's embedded in Cypher, so you always need to write a file somewhere on the file system of the server. So with these functions, you specify typically a path. I don't go into details. You know where, uh, where the documentation is available. It's just, I want to just point you that this functionality is available. Um, the same with uh, that we can persist um, the graph into GraphML. We can also export the graph into Cypher, which means you basically get a set of create or merge statements that rebuild that Cypher structure potentially in another database. So if you need to do some kind of replicate a part of your graph into another data new instance, that is probably something you want to use. Um, again, you can export the full graph or partially based on a Cypher query. Um, just look up the, the documentation for that. And we have integration with Elasticsearch. These functions basically hit the uh, REST API of Elastic. So you can add something to Elastic. You can update, you can uh, query, you can ask for statistics, the typical operations you want to do in conjunction uh, with, with a kind of search engine. And apparently a lot of people use a combination of, of full text search engine plus Neo to, for, of all these um, graph search use cases. You basically want your users to start up by typing some query, um, and this goes to the, to, the, to the full text engine, and then you get back a set of things and then you traverse in the graph what's around that. And with, with these functions, you um, basically in the beginning of your statement, you do a, a APOC ES query to get the start points, and from there, you traverse that, them in, in the graph. So you don't need to mess around with two technologies directly. It hides the, the fact that you're using Elastic under the hoods for that. Um, there's also integration for, for MongoDB, which is from the API perspective, rather similar to, to what we saw from Elastic. So you can add something, change something, query. Um, it, this one, if you use these functions, be aware that you need to put some additional chars from uh, Mongo chars into the plugins folder of Neo4j to make that, these functions available. If you don't have that, you get probably some class not found exception or whatever. Um, pretty similar to Mongo, there's an interface for, for Couchbase. Um, it's pretty much the same concept. It's also hitting the, the REST API or the REST API of Couch and does something with it. And this is, these functions also require that you put some Couch chars into the plugins folder. Okay, so that's just for for the slide part. And um, next thing is, I want to give on um, the rest in form of a kind of demo. So I've written up um, a browser guide. You've probably seen them already. So a browser guard is somehow an HTML file that you can render in the browser as you see them from the tutorials. Um, so what I've done to prepare the demo, I've um, had a MySQL database running on my machine populated with the Northwind data set. I guess everyone knows the Northwind data set, right? Okay. And, what's that question? Okay. Um, 
if I want to work with JDBC, I need to uh, store the respective JDBC driver char files in the plugins folder as well. So I copied here the MySQL connector recent version and that one. Okay, so then there is a function called apoc load JDBC. Let's just run that one. And you see here, uh, if we just put the statement here, uh, I pass in as a, as a first argument a JDBC connect string including username and password. So that by that I know how to hit my database. And the second parameter is the table that I want to ha have a look at. And then I get back here for each row in that table a uh, map structure. And then I can digest that by creating some stuff or doing something with that in the graph. Uh, there's, let me go back to the, to the guide section here. Instead of uh, accessing a table, you can also use as a second parameter a uh, SQL statement that is then executed in the graph. So here I'm getting everything from customers and limit that to five. So I'm expecting five rows now. And you see here, getting five rows, same data as previously. There is, of course, um, if you see something like that, that you store pass username and passwords in, in, a, in a query language, that's a pretty bad idea for, for real use cases. Therefore, um, you can put the configuration of the databases into the config file. So assume that you put a property called APOC JDBC and then the, the database alias name, URL, into the Neo4j conf file, then you can just refer to that alias Northwind, so that corresponds to the third part here. Uh, then your statement um, gets much uh, slicker, and you don't need to hand out the, the database passwords to developers. So you can easily separate operations from, from development here. And yeah, that would be basically a simple statement where you create for each row from the customer's tables one customer node with a full data set. So this basically just puts every property that we have on the on, in the relational database into a property on the on the node in the graph. Okay, a more complex example to um, that shows how you can link your data. So it's of course I need to run the previous statement. I didn't execute that. Um, then the second one will not work. That one here. Fire. Okay, we have a couple of notes. And you see here the properties. So what this one does is, well, we are hitting the, the orders table, and then we do we look up the, the, the customer that is stored in, uh, with a foreign key of customer ID, and then we create order node uh, with some properties. And at the end, we're linking the, the customer that we've looked up previously with the order by relationship to that order. So this is a kind of example how you can um, use the, the primary and foreign keys from the relationship database to create a relationship which is really, so it is basically a real relationship now and not a simulated one. Let's just run that. And then we get here back nodes and, and customers, or orders and customers connected. Uh, what do you have next? There is, yeah, w there is a problem, of course, if you do this imports um, from the UFJ. It, so the transaction state uh, needs to build up in heap memory first. So if you have a huge chunk amount of work, it's, it's likely that you run into uh, memory issues. And to prevent that, you need to sp split that work in, in smaller chunks, so use multiple transactions. You probably know periodic commit in, in load CSV, which is exactly doing that. And um, there is also a, two, uh, a function or procedure that helps you with that in, um, in APOC. And for me, APOC periodic iterate is the, is the killer feature of, of APOC. Uh, um, so you basically pass in two uh, cipher statements, one is providing the data which you want to operate on, and the second uh, one is processed per result from the first one. So here we do APOC load, so this returns a row, and here we, we pass on that row uh, into a parameter, and then we create a category, um, we connect a product to it, and this is done in a batch size of five. In a real world example, we would use batch size of, uh, let's say, 10,000 or something like that. And this doesn't suffer from this eagerness problem of periodic commit if someone is aware of that. 
This works in any case. Let's just run it. Yeah, there have been, if we look now, we have now some to reload. We should see now some products here and some, some categories. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the next one. Where is, oh, now I need to reload the guide, sorry. We will get stuck here, this exercise. <coughs> and of course, this is not tied to, to JDBC. This, you can use the iterate with any kind of uh, function. Okay. Uh, the next example I have is how to load XML. So therefore, I uh, pulled a, um, an excerpt of the sitemap XML of the new 4 j combat site. And I just, um, so I get back a kind of nested um, map structure because XML is a tree. And then I can digest that by, so I know there is, um, the, the, the root node has children. And for every children, I, I create a URL node. That's how a, a sitemap looks like. Since I'm running short in time, I just need to skip over to the next one. Thank you. So there's also the same way we can digest XML, we can digest JSON. Was that, a, that was from the other side of the room. So here we have, um, we access the, five, the recent questions on Neo4j on Stack Overflow by the API. And I just return them now that we see the structure of that. So this is not actually doing something in the graph, but you see here it's, it's like a, and here you see the nesting. So this is just one question. So the question has an owner, which is a, a, a nested block in the JSON. And for a more complete example, uh, we have a rather complex statement here that um, yeah, put, uh, that imports a couple of, um, of questions. Uh, then we put uh, the owner of the question, we add the comments, we add the, the answers that have been asked to the, sent to this question and uh, connect that together. Let's just run that. Okay, so I have now some thousand nodes created on the fly. And if we now wanna probably query uh, who, was the, who was the most active person on Stack Overflow with respect for Neo4j, uh, we can go this here. Any one of these guys in the room here? Okay, so I think my 15 minutes are over. So I could at least talk on that, on that topic for an hour. So for any follow-up question, please uh, grab me on uh, outside the area. I think we don't have much time for additional questions. So I wanna get the stage to the next speaker. Thank you.